Sometimes there's more news than even I can fit into an episode of Gamesplaining. But luckily, we've got speedrunning. That's right, there's too much news for just one episode of Gamesplaining. So say goodbye to sensible sized chunks of gaming related news, not to mention jokes, and hold on to your controllers because the timer starts now. Hogwarts Legacy Collector's Edition content has appeared in leaks on the source code for the game's official website, indicating that we'll probably see the official announcement soon enough. On another day, I might go into a breakdown of such items and events, but while we're speedrunning, suffice to say, they're all cosmetic. Ubisoft's delayed premium game is rumoured, via leaks, to be none other than the next Assassin's Creed title currently referred to as Rift. If speculation is true, gamers can expect a release around mid-2023. With about a two and a half year gap between releases, they might have Todd Howard laughing in his boots. Halo Infinite multiplayer isn't for those with a metered connection, as the game is using up to one gigabyte of data per match. 343, the company behind the game's development, have indicated that this is a bug and they are working on a fix as soon as possible. But in the meantime, make sure you've got that unlimited connection. And yet more delays for Ubisoft, with Avatar Frontier of Pandora being delayed until next year, meaning it will well and truly miss the window to launch with the long-awaited sequel to the classic hit Avatar. Has enough time really passed for that to be a classic? God, so I'm old. Wildflower Studio has joined the fight. Former game director of hits such as Uncharted 4 and The Last of Us, Bruce Starley, has opened up the studio. After a five year hiatus from the industry, the gaming veteran has grabbed some friends and is currently prototyping. What to expect from the studio? If I had more time, I'd tell you. But for now, on to the next story. But then again, why stop at one? Jerry Hook, one of the architects of the original Xbox, with a resume including Halos 4, 5, Master Chief, and Infinite, has stepped down from 343 Industries and created Jar of Sparks, a game development company with the ambition to create a generation of narrative-driven action games with immersive worlds. With many major players leaving larger studios in recent years, one has to wonder if the push for more and more loot boxes and microtransactions has had an influence on the people whose passion it was to simply create fantastic games and stories. Whilst I wouldn't want to appear overly biased, I certainly wish both these new studios good luck and look forward to their games, which hopefully are returned to epic stories and games that don't require purchase after purchase to enjoy. Sony is reducing its customer support on Twitter. The company didn't give any explanation beyond informing gamers that if they're after support, they'll need to turn to the company's official website and submit a request. I think Sony might be forgetting that the reason they have an official at Ask PlayStation Twitter is because frustrated users don't want to wait three to five working days for a response and sending out problems into the Twitter sphere is more likely to find others with the same problem, which will inevitably cause these issues to start trending, forcing the platform to either do something about that issue or endure the bad press. Now they may find that their only option is the latter, and the mostly blue hedgehog will be facing his biggest threat yet. A back-end Steam update has indicated that the hedgehog's new game is slated for release on November 8th, the same day as Ubisoft's Skull and Bones title. Which title will reign supreme? Who will make the investors the most money? And most importantly, Will I get around to reviewing either? And yes, that's a plug. Reviews over on my channel. Get subscribed so you don't miss the upcoming one for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Nintendo have confirmed that the 3DS and Wii U stores will be closing in March 2023. Some gamers might point out that with the Switch store still going strong, Nintendo said when the Switch launched that it would not replace the DS. However, I'd point out that the Switch never did replace the DS. Nintendo just let it die and technically, there's a difference. And in yet more Sony news, the company has announced summer sales. Once again, Australians are left wondering why the coldest month of the year are being referred to as summer, but complain we won't. With discounts on more games than I could name in a regular episode, let alone a speedrun, the names are scrolling behind me, so feel free to pause and have a look, or use your preferred internet search provider to check them out. And Nintendo has warned gamers that putting a non-Nintendo Switch charger may actually damage the console. Funny, I thought the point of it being USB-C was that it was universally compatible with the format. I mean, if not, I think the EU might have something to say. But speaking of the EU, their latest export, the United Kingdom, has declared that loot boxes require no regulation and that the industry should be trusted to self-regulate itself. Worried British gamers who are watching their neighbours in Europe begin to tackle one of the gaming industry's biggest money makers and points of controversy needn't worry about their government following suit. But those who are looking on in hope may find despair is all they get out of this story. But a different despair to what Back for Blood gamers might be feeling. Despair from almost all hope being lost for the game's characters fighting against a global ridden infection, that is. The real life players can rejoice as Turtle Rock Studios, the game producers, have confirmed a new campaign missions are coming as part of the game's next DLC, due out in the coming month. Do you know what else is due? Sony in court. The company is in the legal firing line once again as a class action lawsuit has been brought against it in an Illinois court, alleging that Sony knowingly concealed defects in the next generation console, 
including its ability to crash mid-game and lose players' progress. This isn't Sony's first legal dance though, as the company faced another lawsuit for the PlayStation 5 just last year, alleging many of the console's controllers suffered from stick drift. Maybe Sony should have consulted Nintendo on that one. And if you're after a bargain, you should consult this week's freebies. Steam is giving away nothing again. For now. The Epic Game Store is giving away Shop Titans and Tannerberg, whilst Prime members have access to actually the same games that they did last week. If you missed last week's episode, firstly, be sure to go and check it out. There's some good news updates. And secondly, the games consist of Manic Mansion, Suzerain, Fishing North Atlantic, and Fell Seal Arbiter's Mark. And stop that timer! So, how did I do? Only you and the editor will know. But what I know is there's more news to come. There'll be shorts throughout the week, which you can see here or on any of my social medias linked down in the description. And of course, a new gamesplaining episode next Tuesday. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any. With Immersive Worlds. It's actually Immersive Worlds, but you know.